Hey, hi, Bharat. So, this side, Hari. Uh, so, I yeah. got your profile from HR. So, this mm-hmm. is wrong, right? Uh, purely for AWS and DevOps, we are seeking for the candidate who can join with the better knowledge. Okay. Yeah, I went yeah. through your resume, but still, can you please brief about yourself? Yeah. Hi, uh, this is Bharat. And, you know, I'm working uh, in this technology of IWS, Azure and DevOps in the CACD area. Okay, so before to that, when I'm starting with when I'm starting a career, I'm a full stack developer actually. Now in that time, I'm knowing only the front end, back end database, and those things only. After that, uh, you know that's that's learning. It's not you know giving satisfaction to me. So that I switched my career into the DevOps. So and in addition to that, Linux networking basics. So these things helping me to switch my career into the DevOps and then cloud orchestration. So those things. And yeah, okay, so currently, you know, I'm working in these areas and in AWS part, I have, you know, knowledge in uh, virtual machine and uh, VPC networking areas, load balancers uh, to provide a high availability and uh, auto scaling part and DNS part, real time hosting configuration, how we are purchasing the domain in uh, vendors. So configuration, domain configuration and code pipeline to set up a CICD code commit, version control uh, system, and uh, code build, um, and cloud front to you know avoid the latency. And um, yeah, OK, so and then S3, as usual, you know, S3 is a basic thing for uh, storing a data into that. And uh, um, AWS organization, so organization stuff, I know. And uh, yeah. Okay, so these are the knowledges I have in the AWS. Similar kind of knowledges I'm having in that issue. Same like, for example, if I'm going to work in EC2 in AWS Citizens in Azure, I'm going to work in the virtual machines, um, storage account, VNet, load balancer, similar kind of services I know in Azure as well. In coming to DevOps, um, I know the Python actually. Okay, so uh, Python is mandatory to, uh, you know, in nowadays. Okay, so nowadays Python, it's more efficient to learn and it's very easy to, okay, so that knowledge I have and uh, uh, Linux, Linux things. Okay, so how we are maintaining the Linux machines and uh, Boto 3 part, ARM, Azure ARM. Okay, so native tool of uh, IIS in Azure and Terraform for multi-cloud infrastructure and uh, uh, yeah, as well as, you know, Jenkins and uh um git workflows okay so how we are uh designing a workflow cacd pop cacd actions in github and uh, code pipeline we are know. good uh, Bharat. okay i think uh, mm-hmm. yeah. whatever technologies you said that's more than enough yeah let's kick start mm-hmm. with yeah. some technical question i'll ask you okay so mm-hmm. i'll start from aws so coming to mm-hmm. aws right can you please tell me the difference between the security group and the acl Okay, so security group, it's for, you know, providing the uh, security to the virtual machines only. For example, who should access the VM? Uh, like that, we can only perform the allow activity only to that. Okay, so in ACL, this is will this is for, uh, sorry, this will be in network level. Okay, so for example, uh, in network around, you know, 1000 ranges, for example, other networks people wants to access uh, in our network in the sense we have to allow okay so after that only they can reach our server okay so if you are not allowing to them in the sense you know if we restricted something like that in the sense they couldn't perform any activity inside of our network okay so acl means it will work in the network level security means security group means this will work in the uh, virtual machine level okay so both are uh, you know similarly like a firewall Okay, fine. So there are some EC2 instances I have, but I'm not able mm-hmm. to connect to that EC2 instance, mm-hmm. Linux based instance. Mm-hmm. What are the mm-hmm. troubleshooting things you will do? Not mm-hmm. a- first, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I got your question. Uh, first thing is I need to check the port in the security group. Okay, so generally, if you are working with the Linux machine in the sense, you have to allow the SSH port into that Linux machine and you know, generally, if you are if you are going to access the virtual machine, your virtual uh, you know using the public IP in that time, your machine should having the internet connection. Okay, so internet connection 
we have to check in the network level and that root entry and then subnet association we have to check okay so to it it getting the network it getting the internet or not like that first we need to check that and then in nacl nacl we have to check okay so that itself we allowed or not so that part we need to tell we need to focus and uh, root table okay so in that root table we allowed or not okay so root table entries nacl and uh, security group so these areas we have to focus and internet connection too okay yeah that's good so coming to you know uh, vpc uh, so mm -hmm. how you can use transit gateway to you know provide connectivity uh, in which case you will recommend transit gateway to your customer um actually no generally if you are going to uh, establish a connectivity between the network pairing is enough to uh, pairing is enough okay so if you having a two networks in the sense pairing you can go okay so no issues in that more than two networks more than four networks five networks like that if you are going in the sense in that time vpc pairing will not <laughs> no you have to do you can perform with vpc pairing but uh complex setup you have to perform okay so if you are going with the vpc pairing in the sense you know that much pairings we have to configure but you know if you are using a if we are using a transit gateway right we can simply map those uh, vpcs into the transit gateway by using transit gateway attachment so that will gives the routing okay so if you having a, a vpc in different region so you wants to expose the connectivity between uh, those networks in that time you have to go with the transit gateway pairing okay so transit gateway pairing is for uh, th that will helps to expose the pairing connectivity across the region okay so transit gateway which helps to uh, expose the connectivity between the multiple vpcs in the same region okay so that itself you can communicate each other all right yeah that's good so imagine i have an on premises uh, data center uh, I do have a AWS cloud. I want to you know, uh, establish a communication from on-prem to AWS cloud. What is the best mm -hmm. way as an architect you will suggest? Um, oh, you mean migration, you're telling huh? No, no, I'm talking about a connectivity, communication. On-prem data center need to communicate with AWS. On-prem data center need to... Okay. So, uh, uh, actually, you know, we have to do the same architecture, first of all. So we have to design the same architecture and whatever the components we placed in that on-prem data center, we have to recreate the same thing in the cloud. Okay. So for example, in, your, in that on-prem data center, we having some servers and then networks and then rootable and uh, sorry, uh, internet connection, something like that we configured, you know, uh, VM scale set, something like that we configured in that on-prem in the sense, sorry, VM scale set, it's not in the on-prem. So I'm just telling, okay, so this kind of setup we configured in the town from the sense, we have to recreate the same thing inside of a cloud. Okay, so for that, before to recreate this uh, structure in the, sorry, before to recreate the resource in cloud, we have to design one architecture diagram. So based on that, we have to plan accordingly. After that, we have to migrate the on-premises data into cloud. Okay, so first thing is we have to design the architecture diagram. Then we have to move the proper plan. We have to recreate the same setup in cloud. Then um, we have to uh, go with the migration process. Yeah. Okay. So how about uh, DevOps? So what are the DevOps tools? As you said, you are good in uh, Jenkins, Git, uh, Terraform, almost, mm. right? So what is the difference mm. uh, you can tell me in between uh, cloud formation and Terraform? Uh, cloud formation. Cloud formation is a native tool in AWS, you know, uh, for IAC infrastructure as a code. Okay, so that is. But Terraform, which will you know work in the multi-cloud. Okay, so multi-cloud means you can in, set up an infra in Salesforce. You can Salesforce is uh, similarly like you know one of a vendor in cloud and uh, aws sorry even aws also no you can use we can set up a resource using terraform also in aws and uh, gcp azure okay so we can uh, set up an infra in these areas also and 
uh, you know, in Terraform, uh, Terraform is a tool actually. So this will work in the multi-cloud and then it's an open source also. But in CFT, uh, you know, stacks is there. In here also, you know, some advantages is there, but that will be only for in the same cloud, stack updation and parameter, same kind of thing. Here also is there, but you know, um, it's a tool actually. It will work in the multi-cloud. Okay, so you know, in real time, one competitive tool also is there. You know, you you already know that. Follow me. Okay, so that's the competitive tool. That's an equivalent tool also. Okay, so the comparison, it's not you know equal actually. If you are going to compare CFT in the sense, uh, same like that, you have to compare in Azure ARM. Same like that, Azure ARM is there. That is a native IAC code for Azure. In AWS, CFT is a native uh, IAC for AWS. Yeah. All right. So uh, you have a uh, in your account, right? Imagine you have around 20 to 25 different AWS account available. Okay. I wanted to properly make sure every accounts are properly organized and I want to ensure some policies need to be updated. So for mm -hmm. this requirement, how will you propose a solution for this? Mm, yeah. Okay. So in AWS itself, AWS organization is there. Okay. So that's a service. There itself, you can simply organize uh, multiple AWS accounts. Okay. So how we can manage in the sense. Uh, generally, if you are taking a root account, right? There itself, you can find the buildings. And if you are going to create an IAM user in the sense, they couldn't find the billing in your account, but whatever they are charging, you have to pay accordingly, right? But this organization, it's a little bit advanced. We can put restriction to the root users also. Why? Because, you know, if you are going to work in organization, uh, you want to pay. Okay, so organization, how to pay. In that time, if you are using unwantedly some resources, okay, so in that time, organization will not pay for that. Okay, so what they will do, they will create an organization. They will invite you first of all. Okay, so first of all, they will invite you. You have to accept the invitation. Once you accept, once you accept the invitation, they will assign the service control policy to you. Okay, say CP. Okay, so in that policy, first they will restrict. Okay, so leave organization. Leave organization policy. They will restrict. By default, you having a re leave organization privilege. They will restrict that. Okay, so your account will not come out from that organization. In addition to that, where we are working. For example, if you are a developer in the sense, your work will be in the um, Beanstack and uh, Virtual Mission, S3, these areas only. Yeah. So in that time, what will happen? They will restrict the other services. Okay, so you have to work on your services only. If you if you are going to try to access the other services or other, so other resources, something like that in the sense, that won't work. Okay, so like that, they will organize. Okay, so SCP is that and uh, organization service. Okay, so this two thing is mandatory to perform this requirement, sorry, to achieve this requirement. Yeah. Mm, yes, sorry. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, moreover, right, uh, coming to uh, client requirement in my environment, right, I suppose to use only Mumbai region and uh, London, two regions only. My clients are not supposed to provision any resources in other uh, regions. So, how will mm. you control this and how will you ensure this is happening? Uh, which means we have to restrict the uh, privileges, sorry, we have to restrict the access of region to IAM users. That is what you're telling, right? Yeah, my users are supposed to create uh, resources in only two regions, Mumbai and London. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. Actually, we have, you know, uh, generally, if you are going to create an IAM user, you are going to set one policy, right? So in addition to that, uh, what we have to do, we have to set one policy boundary, actually. In that policy boundary, we have to provide that access. In that condition statement, you have you guys have to add the respective region. Okay, so you guys have to restrict that. For example, this people wants to access this region. Like that, you guys have to put that in the condition property in the policy. Okay, for example, your users wants to access Mumbai region and then uh, Virginia region in the sense. 
you have to put it in the condition okay so these people can access this region these people can access this region like that we have to put the condition in policy after that they couldn't come out okay so whatever the policies they initially having that won't work why because you know we mapping in, we mapping in the policy boundary okay so if you are going to mapping in the policy boundary that only will work other policy will not work so that's the thing okay so you now the thing is we have to add the condition in uh, policy boundary okay so policy which means uh, inside of a policy we have to update the condition which region that people should use okay so this is the only thing okay so can you explain the pipeline have you ever worked on any pipeline can you please explain the flow mm, yeah actually you know um uh, yeah okay so actually you know uh inside inside of that pipeline multiple stages are there build test and uh, uh, deploy monitoring first of all you know when you are going to plan any sorry when you are going to design any pipeline first thing you guys have to plan that is what the first stage okay so first thing is we have to plan okay so which stage we have which stage you know uh should execute first okay so inside of that stage what are all the things we have to configure okay so that thing we have to uh, decide first that is what in the plan stage after that code code means you know we have to the, the back end developers have to build their code that is what the second stage okay so once they updated the code they will approach they will upload that code into one repo okay so in real time lot of version control is there bit bucket code commit um uh, code commit and uh, gitlab like that you know lot of version controls the version version control systems are there so they will upload their code into that area after that build action will perform build means uh build stage means that build stage inside of that build stage uh that application will execute inside okay so it working or not locally okay so that action will perform locally um if that works properly in the sense that stage will move on to the next stage that is something called test okay so inside of that test stage in the sense uh back end peoples will check is there any bug or not something like that you know they will check after that what will move on to the deploy deploy means in other words we can say it like a uh, it's a kind of a hosting also okay so hosting means you know generally if you are going if you are going to developing any application we have to deploy it into an area right so that is what the deployment stage in real time um load balancer we can go and uh, ansible you can use and kubernetes okay so for uh, container orchestration uh, to getting the high availability so we can use it after that you know monitoring uh, tool will be tool will array okay so graph now and uh, gray gray lay. like that you know some other uh, monitoring tools are there they will that will check your application and giving the proper response or not like that it will monitor your application if it throwing any issue or something again you have to plan accordingly like that you have to decide okay so this kind of you know cicd platform cicd design we have to perform you know this what you know i initially worked actually okay so that's fine uh, bharat so i'm good so let me update the feedback to hr they'll revert you okay mm, yeah thank you yeah.